Hey guys, today I have a flip through and review of The Good and the Beautiful's Language Arts Level 5, and this is the third edition. I've had children use a previous edition, but this is the first time I've had a child use this third edition of the Level 5. So I'm going to turn the camera around, give you a good look at all the components because there are quite a few, and then I'm going to come back here and share my thoughts on it. Let's start off with the course book. The course book is quite thick. So this is one I printed myself using their free PDF you can download. Um, if I put them together, you can see how thick that is. So I printed it in two different books just to make it more manageable. So I'll show you this one in a second. But let's start with this. So third edition, like I said, level five. So it starts by saying about the course. Now, I'm trying to remember how they sell it. I think it comes bound on this side. I bound it at the top because my daughter who just used this is left-handed and she prefers when things are bound at the top. So it's divided in to um, different units and then there's section reviews within them and then a course assessment at the end. So there's 120 lessons and six units. There's a few other books that you need that I'll show you in a minute. There's also geography and grammar cards, the answer key. Um, you also need a set of watercolors, paintbrushes, fine tip black pen, paper towel, rock salt, and hair dryer are optional. So this course, as a language arts course, covers reading, literature, spelling, writing, grammar and usage, punctuation, vocabulary, geography, art appreciation, and art instruction. So it gives you an idea of how long you should be spending on each section within it and how to use each section. There's some frequently asked questions here. And then this is the at a glance for the level. So it breaks down into these topics what is going to be covered in this level. Continues here and here. Level 5 spelling rules. contraction sets and then it goes into the overview so for each unit they have this overview telling you what you're going to be working on the challenging words the rules uh, literature art geography writing so you know what to expect so for unit one they have different capitals and their states as well as provinces and their capitals uh, it tells you how to do that. There's poetry memorization. And here is the actual lesson. So I'll flip through a bit so you can kind of see how the lessons change, but they always have the little check boxes so that you know um, what you've done. You can check them off. You can see I missed some. There's dictation. There's art. There's different sections the student needs to do. There's some geography and then on to lesson two. So I know this is kind of hard because I have it bound at the top. I'm going to see if I can flip through this for you and see. Hopefully you can see some of these pages here and how it's set up. Now I'm trying to remember, did I put at the back of this one the spelling? I didn't. I left it only in the other one. No, I did. No, I didn't. Okay, so here's um, how I divided it. I did the first three in here, and then I did four through six in this one here. So each one starts again the same thing with the same overview, telling you what you're going to be going through, and then it's exactly the same. It's got the capitals, challenging words to pronounce, and right into the lesson. So I'll show you a few pages. They have quite a bit of samples on their website, but it's also free to download the PDF, so you can have a really good look through it. Now the appendix is what I was checking. I was trying to remember if I'd put it in both books or not, because I wanted to show you what's in here. So in the appendix at the back, these are um, spelling practice sheets. 
So if your child needs some practice spelling, they have different layouts that you can use. My daughter's drawings. She's always drawing. You can see what those look like. So they're just um, kind of unique ways to practice the spelling words. Sometimes they're writing it, sometimes it's like they're typing it, drawing on lines. <laughs> My daughter likes to draw. So you can see what those look like. So you can always print more of these if you need more of them, but there are quite a few in the back here. So that is the student book. That's what they're gonna be using. And then there's the answer key here. I like to print my answer keys out. I just find it's easier to use paper, especially like if the internet's down or something, it's all right here. And I have another child who'll be using this level, so I thought just print it and again, I just bound it, same as before. So let me show you what this looks like. So they literally take the pages from the student book, put them on here, and they use red for the answers. So you can see exactly what the child is supposed to answer. And it's very clear and it's easy to mark. There are some that are like, um, it will vary and things like that, but for the most part, they have all the answers in here. So I'll give you a quick flip through of this. This whole book, let's see, 150 some pages is the answer key. All right, so then the next component is you have these grammar and punctuation cards. And I have some homemade ones I made years ago um, of Canada, of the Canadian states, or not states, the provinces and territories, because um, we're Canadian. We want my children to know those. But these are what the cards look like. These are older ones. I'm not sure what they look like now. These are ones we already had, I believe, because my boys have gone through this, three of them already, and the cards are just covering the same material, so we use the same one. So there's like a common coordinating conjunction conjoined together, two independent clauses. You know, what state is this? That's Oregon. So it tells you how to do this, but I'll give you a quick kind of flip through. There's some uh, international countries as well. There's grammar, there's the states, there's the continents. What is a noun? These are, let's see, point to the states of the original colonies. So there you go. This one is, say these states in the capitals. So that's what those cards look like. Uh, countries. Yeah, it's the same as what they use for the other levels. They used to start in level four and now they start these with level five. Okay, let's move on to the next part. So for this level, the kids are doing watercolor. And something that's new with this edition is that they have this watercolor template sheets that you can buy. Of course, my daughter has used it. However, I actually bought another copy um, because shipping is so expensive to Canada, knowing my son was gonna do this later on. So it's about that thick and it comes with like some of the outlining to make it easier for the kids. And it's quality watercolor paper. So that's what that looks like. And then it does come in the back here is the instruction booklet. So it tells them step by step and it's, a very well-made book like this is going to last a while. Um, tips, materials, and how to do each of the projects. I'll show some of my daughter's art at the end so you can get an idea because these are fairly complicated art projects. I feel like um, even though they've added the templates, they're still pretty advanced. You can see these all look like and they go along with what they're learning about so I'll talk like about this in a minute so that's what that book looks like all right the next part are the novels that go along with it there are four that go along with the level five the clockmaker Sun and I think these are all yeah these are all level five on their reading scale so the clockmaker Sun 
says, During the early 1900s in the Black Forest in Germany, a 14-year-old boy named Fritz becomes lost in a fog, setting in motion a life-changing adventure. This one is Marjorie. Marjorie Jefferson is used to a life of indulgence in Ohio, but when her parents must travel overseas for her father's health, Mar Marjorie is sent to stay with Lucy, her childhood nurse. Lucy lives on the beautiful island of Monhegan, where hard work and kindness are of great value. Captured words. It can't be done. At least that's what everyone but Aquana and her father Sequoia think. They won't let others' doubts deter them, though, for Sequoia's dream is too important. The Cherokee people need a written language for communication, and so their history and stories won't be forgotten. And the last one is Chico of the Andes. High in the rugged Andes of Ecuador, 10-year-old Chico works hard and lives happily with his grandfather and his pet bear, Chan. By firelight, Grandfather tells Chico amazing stories about the Inca and other ancient people who once inhabited their land. So those are the books. So as you can see, there is quite a lot of components to this. Let me see if I can gather them all in these three books. So it is quite a lot of stuff for this level. Along with that, there's also, I want to say three cooking things in there. Maybe it's only two. I'm going to have to look it up. I'll try and put some pictures in here. Um, <laughs> I think cooking adds another level of like learning and dimension and kind of bringing it all together. But it's hard for us. It's hard at the same time. I don't think I particularly enjoy it. The last one that we did was because of this book here. It takes place in the Black Forest. And so she was learning about the Black Forest um, geography wise. And then they, the art project was that Black Forest cake. And then the recipe was Black Forest cupcakes. Um, it didn't quite work out, <laughs> but you can see how they kind of pull everything together. Like it's all related. And I feel like that's the theme of the course that they, the grammar, the spelling, uh, the geography, the poems, they're all pulled together. So while you're kind of doing different things through the lesson for the day it all has that common like tie or thread in it which is something that i really like i do like the good and the beautiful that's why our family has used it for so many years i mean now i have used the pre-k all the way through high school three with at least one child in each level and it is a really solid program i did notice some issues with the spelling for this level, my daughter struggled with that. That's something we're going to continue working on. And I've heard that said a number of other times too from other people. So I'm not sure if that's just the newer editions. It kind of has stuck out more to me or if it's just my child. I'm not sure. I asked my daughter to share her thoughts about the books. And she said she just found this one, Chico of the Andes, not very interesting. She didn't really like it. She said captured words was okay. Not her favorite, but it was interesting. She said Marjorie was okay, just okay. And then she loved The Clockmaker's Son. She actually read this book before starting the course because it sounded really interesting to her. And then she read it again during the course. And I think she might've read it a third time already. She really, really liked this one. So, I mean, Hopefully I've given you a good overview. I feel like when I do reviews of The Good and the Beautiful, I don't have a lot to say because we do enjoy them. Uh, they work really well. It, it is a lot of components. If you're purchasing outside the US, the shipping is crazy expensive. However, levels from, I think it's K or one through their book studies level eight, are free to download in PDF form. So you can actually get the PDF version of these books. You don't have to physically have these books as well as getting, you know, the course book and the answer key and printing those out. So affordability is kind of what you make of it. It can be a very free, cheap curriculum, or it can be a more expensive one that you want to invest in if you have say multiple children using this course. But yeah, I feel like it does a good job. It's easy for parents. It's easy-ish for children in terms of understanding what they need to do every day. And that routine is similar every day. And we're happy with it. 
If I've missed anything, please leave it in the comment section down below. I always try to answer your questions and I will just end here showing you some of her art and our food projects that um, did and did not go so well. <laughs> I hope this finds you having a great day. Take care.